This family is truly making the best out of a bad situation. That yesterday. was not the case here yesterday. The Phillies have the lead, 5-2. to two. Live in Jefferson Heights, I'm Kylie Thomas, News Channel 9. We sifted through 60 pages of documents. Record show that led. It would allow an officer to cut a chain once blocking entrance. We're going to go find us some Alabama fans. Police were outside their house. It was three o'clock in the morning. District one school board member Rhonda Thurman, who did not have to fight for her seat this cycle, hopes this recent UTC grad can fill David Testerman's shoes. It feels like any other day. Cautious before starting his trek home. She followed behind. And the confidence level of our businesses and our people is at an all time high. Here at the Chattanooga Fire Department, so this is a controlled burn. Never asked to send any equipment through the scanner, even after setting the alarm off. Ox Highway is now reopened. Treating the roads less than 24 hours before the snow. Dogs lead at the break, but just like the last meeting, Alabama switches quarterbacks in the second half. Tua Tagovailoa goes out with a leg injury, and Jalen Hurts... <laughs> But in the fourth, Pogue to Lad McConkey, the junior. He has got some wheels, 40 yards worth. The Mountaineers jump out to a 14-0 lead. Opening Bradley Central possession, Dylan Standiford gets rocked. Mountaineers win it 14-7. At two years old, that girl exuded life. Little Scarlett Hayes was feisty. She was independent, rambunctious. And she loved to be fancy. And you'd have her in her regular clothes getting ready to leave. And as you're packing the diaper bag, she would come up and she's wearing another princess dress. She was that little girl that had the princess dress on, but liked to play in the mud, you know. Her parents say she was always trying to keep up with the big kids. Her six-year-old sister and five-year-old brother were just two people at a pool in Johnson City the day Scarlett was found unconscious. There were probably 40 people in and around the pool. Her dad, Michael, says he had just taken off Scarlett's floaty so she could eat. As he was cutting up her chicken, he heard everyone panic. I saw her, her being lifted out of the water and she was limp and blue. It was gut-wrenching. Um, I felt like my heart was being ripped out from me. Scarlett made it to the hospital but died the next day. Now she's buried here in Chattanooga where her parents hope to join her one day. One day we will come back here whether it's moving back to Chattanooga or if it's uh, to be buried beside our daughter. They say their greater hope though lies in God's promise that he works all things for good. It's like the Lord has her in his arms and he also has me in his arms at the exact same time. Now filled with a peace that's hard to comprehend, the Haineses say they believe this is all part of the plan. At the end of the day, when the Lord is ready for that child or adult to come home, there is nothing, nothing that you can do to stop it. He knew how many breaths she was going to take on this earth, and so uh, we just have to um, trust that he's going to bring goodness and glory from this. Diana Parkinson has made changes to her home since a Walker County deputy shot and killed her husband through the kitchen window. She installed security cameras and put up curtains for her grandson, who's seven. He's scared to death that a policeman will come back and shoot him through the window. In the den now sits a shadow box filled with memories from her husband's service with the Navy. Finally got his uh, flag and I've got his medals that he wore. But one thing that hasn't changed, the bullet riddled window above her kitchen sink. Until I'm sure that justice is gonna be served, it'll stay right like that. I just can't do it. According to the GBI, officers went to her home because Dorothy Gass called 911 and falsely reported that Parkinson's daughter Amy was planning to hurt her children. Gass's son was going through a messy divorce with Amy. Diana says she and her husband had no idea police were outside their house. It was three o'clock in the morning and everybody was asleep. The dogs woke them up. He slept on this side, I slept on that side, of course. And um, he always had his gun laying right here at night. Mark grabbed that gun and made his way to the kitchen. She followed behind. Diana says what happened next was quick. She heard the gunfire, then saw her husband fall to the floor. I'd never seen him look helpless, and the helpless look on his face right before he passed. To this day, it haunts me.
An internal investigation by the Walker County Sheriff's Office concluded the deputies acted properly and within policy. The officer who fired at Mark said he was in fear that he was about to be shot. He told investigators he could see Mark's gun clearly and it was pointed directly at him. Outside you can see straight in, you can see whatever you need to see, but uh, inside you can see nothing. Diana believes her husband never saw the deputies. From the outside, she shows us how close somebody has to get to the window to be seen from the inside. Diana says officers didn't take enough time to figure out what was going on, and now her time with her husband is over. It's lonesome, and we've been together doing everything together for years, and now there's nobody. This is this is a young bird. This is a hatchier bird. And my mom and I were going out to dinner, and I saw this bird and this dog flipping something, and I was like, "That's got to be something." So when we finished eating dinner, I said, "Drive slow in this one spot," and I saw the bird still sitting in the spot. So I picked it up and put it in a nice box and kept it nice and cool and quiet, and took it to Sherry's, and it's being released. It survived. It had some trauma, but thankfully nothing was broken, and all it needed was some cage rest and some pain meds and then we were able to give it some flight time in the aviary and today it's a, it's a ready to go free and Sue's here with us to see the bird that she saved be released. We are the only uh, wildlife rescue in um, the greater Chattanooga area. Today we're releasing close to 40 songbirds and um, all of these birds were um, orphaned or injured wildlife in general don't get a second chance and these birds they got a second chance. I put on an aluminum numbered leg band. It's an opportunity to educate the children as well and to let them know that they can intervene and they can help when an animal's in need.